Today I'm going to be making a video on how the Honda CVT transmission works and basically how it responds to your inputs and showing you guys some things that you might not know. So basically, the transmission, it's got a park, reverse, neutral, drive, and a sport mode for it. So right now I'm just in standard drive and just drive along, cruise, RPM stay reasonably low. And as soon as you get on the throttle, the RPMs surge up, allowing the engine to have more power so you can um, do whatever you need with that power. And what I really want to show you is how the paddle shifters respond to your inputs and how the, the engine or the transmission reacts when you stab the throttle if you're in a certain gear. Um, you might be surprised by this transmission. It's, it's, it's actually a very responsive one. Now as you can see, it it's responds basically instantly to your inputs like all modern automatic transmissions should. We're at a point in technology where transmissions are exceeding a manual transmission. Person look like they want to pull up. But they're exceeding a manual transmission in speed. They're usually faster now. They're not as fun, but some people don't like manual transmission. I, I personally, I drove manual transmissions for 10 years. So for me to get an automatic, that's saying something about this transmission and automatics today. Very quick shifts out of this thing. Let you have almost complete control of the transmission. So we're in seventh, seventh gear with the, with the transmission right now. It is a CVT. That's why I go with seventh. It's really just a, a ratio of pulls, and the throttles. It's fully down. I have it full throttle right now. So the car will hold the gear no matter what. If you have in sport mode and you have the paddle shifters engaged, which is really cool because I like having that in a car. I don't, if I don't want that, the transmission to constantly have the engine shifting speeds, that'd be great. Especially, it makes it more predictable. Downshifting. Downshifting, you know, it's, it's very quick. But when you are flooring it, and you have the RPMs high, the upshifts are a little strange, but that's just because it's a CVT transmission. Now, so we are downshifting, which is awesome if you're going down hills, by the way. Downshift to save your brakes. So it's floored, and very crispy shifts, no drama. Just an overall, really well done transmission. They must have put a lot of work into this thing. We got a horse trailer merging on up here, which is not a biggie. We got horse farms all around here. But I really do, I do like this transmission. I didn't think I would like it this much, but it is, it's quite surprising, it really is. And I'm sure it's only gonna get better as they develop it through the years. It's gonna just keep getting better and better. You might end up seeing these transmissions in more and more cars because they are more efficient than the standard transmission that's, that have the uh, torque converters. Like most, most cars still have torque converters if they're um, automatic. Some cars come with dual clutch transmissions which actually use clutch plates, kind of like a manual clutch that's automatically automated to know when and where to grab the next gear and when and where to engage a clutch, when to disengage it, how to engage it depending on how you're driving. So there's a lot of programming that goes into that. But I think the CV transmission might be coming on a little harder once they develop it a little more. Once they can start putting this transmission to higher horsepower cars, it'll actually, it should make those cars faster because you don't have to wait and shift, especially since everybody's going for a turbo car. Essentially what happens when you shift with a turbo car, with most of them, unless they have a specific setup on it for anti-lag and 
everything, um, you're losing your boost from your turbos. So after you shift, the RPMs drop real quick because it's got a special engine control unit on it that essentially retards the timing and, and slows the engine up by using the firing order and how it fires. Um, so the transmission won't get hurt during a hard shift and it'll it'll make the transmission last longer and also give you a smoother shift but the downside of that is it loses all the boost all the boost from the engine is gone and it has to build it back up before you get maximum power whereas if you have a CVT transmission you're not losing that boost because the transmission is constantly at that peak RPM it has to be at Now, it's, it's not as big a deal with a supercharged engine. It's like a lot of the American muscle cars have supercharged engines now. But those still have um, little valves in there that have to close in order to get the boost pressure back up. So, what else do you do with this transfer? Right now it's in drive. And if you downshift, it'll let your RPMs come back up if you're going down a hill and you let off the accelerator. But once you get back on the accelerator, the transmission puts itself back into its default automatic mode and resumes if you're using a normal throttle throttle percentage. Now if you are flooring it and you downshift, it lets the transmission know that you want more speed essentially. So it's gonna hold that RPM that you choose until you resume your normal throttle like I am now. if you put it in the sport mode like I had it earlier with just a standard automatic mode the engine actually stays up at a higher RPM because the transmission is in a, a slightly higher a slightly lower ratio so you can get a better get better speed out of the car and have better response but I don't like driving around like this because it's it's hurts your gas mileage a little bit puts more wear and tear on your engine if you're just on the highway you forget you're in sport mode um, so I think the only way to really drive sport mode is by using the paddles, which allow you to manage the RPMs of the engine. And I do use this quite often because on a long, boring drive, you got to keep yourself busy. Otherwise, you'll, you might you might nod off. I, I'm not one of the types of people that nods off when I get a little bored while I'm driving, but I assume that it would help somebody that does get bored while they're driving. So that's, that's my, my brief little explanation on how the CVT transmission works and handles in a Honda Accord of this generation. And I'm sure it's very similar for the newer versions. I don't, I don't believe they would have switched the transmission that much over just one generation. I think it's pretty much a standard transmission. They might have a little more strength behind them and they might be a little smoother handle, or handle a little more power. but. I know their touch button, or push button for park, reverse, neutral, etc. But that can be achieved through just a small computer with a couple of solenoids that control levers or just a basic setup on the transmission. But I hope you guys liked this brief explanation. It's not really brief, but this explanation of the Honda CVT transmission. I know it was very fun to make because these roads are great. So if you would, Please like and subscribe and I'll be coming out with more content. Thank you.